The purpose of this study is to understand how students perceive the usefulness of integrating emerging technologies in a digital media course. My research questions are, how do students perceive advantages and disadvantages of different emerging technologies in this digital media course? And how did students' attitude related to emerging technologies change over the course of the semester? This study seeks to better understand student attitudes because of the long-standing correlation in literature between attitude and learning. Many research studies have found that a student's positive attitude can have significant impacts on learning. Educators face several challenges integrating emerging technologies into their courses. One challenge is the digital competency required to develop new lessons using new tools that are evolving at a rapid pace. Basilota Gomez Pablos et al. conducted a systematic literature review of university and college educator self-assessments. Educators recognized they had low digital competence and lacked some digital skills altogether. Bigstad et al. investigated the fast digitization that occurred in higher education during the COVID-19 pandemic. They argued that education was stuck in a traditional pattern which hindered the innovation of new learning forms. They pointed out that traditional learning design of lectures and readings may serve as a crutch that prevents educators from exploring new digital learning spaces now made possible by emerging technologies. While some saw the shift to online learning as an opportunity to develop alternative educational opportunities, others noted the shift in teaching methods created by emergency remote learning caused stress in both educators and students. Fear of the unknown is always a deterrent to new technology adoption, but there is a possibility that the pandemic left some educators a bit shell-shocked and in more need of time-tested pedagogies. Adopting tools like VR can understandably feel overwhelming, especially because there are so many different hardware and software to choose from. VR Compare claims to be the internet's most comprehensive VR headset database. The website features specifications, prices, and reviews of 200 different devices on the market. While an increasing amount of research is being published on VR and emerging technologies in education, there's a gap in literature about how educators apply VR specifically between different types of high-end and budget head-mounted displays. In their systematic literature review, Radianti et al. found that VR has largely been studied as part of an experimental and developmental work as opposed to how it's applied in actual teaching scenarios. In addition to lacking research on VR learning design, many research studies in this area lack specific details about the make and model used in the study. Instead, many authors use broad terms that are actively changing as technology evolves. VR is evolving so quickly that researchers need to use specific terminology to accurately assess how this technology impacts learning. Definitions of VR in literature are often broad, but most of them focus on experiencing presence in a digital environment. Berdia defined VR as technology that uses computer graphics to simulate real life scenarios through visual, auditory, and tactile senses of computer media manipulation. Immersion is frequently incorporated into definitions of VR. Immersion has been described as leading to the state of consciousness where users lose awareness of their physical surroundings because they are surrounded by an artificial world. Pedersen et al. argued that immersive and interactive technology facilitates learning via presence. Technology enables immersion, which leads the learner to feeling a sense of presence. An immersive 3D VR experience can be accessed in a VR HMD, while at the same time allow other users to join via a desktop computer. Both could be called VR, but researchers have found the immersive environment created by a fully enclosed headset offers a different user experience than that exact same content viewed on a computer monitor. When a user accesses 360 degree experience on a desktop computer with a keyboard and a mouse, it may be considered non-immersive VR. Immersive VR is a virtual environment where users do not see their real world. Cronin also identified semi-immersive as a category in VR. Semi-immersive VR is often tied to cave automatic virtual environment, 
which is when users view projections on walls and sometimes floors instead of through a VR headset. Semi-immersive VR is also known as projection-based VR. While projection-based VR is less immersive than fully immersive VR, some researchers contend it offers other benefits because it allows for collaborative viewing and face-to-face -face interaction with other learners. There are three other realities that dovetail with VR that researchers also need to understand because their futures are intricately tied. Augmented reality, mixed reality, and extended reality. The Technology Acceptance Model, otherwise known as TAM, assists researchers in understanding factors that impact adoption of new technology. TAM focuses on a tool's perceived usefulness and perceived ease of use. Perceived usefulness measures expectations of learning outcomes, while perceived ease of use measures a person's perception of how easy a tool will be to use. TAM is emerging as a promising approach to VR education research. TAM claims that attitudes about technology will impact a user's behavior, which will affect performance. This study was designed with a constructivist mixed method approach because of its flexible framework in mixed methods research. While most of the study focuses on qualitative reflections, the research was also guided by some quantitative survey questions. Dewadi et al. explained that a constructivist paradigm is guided by the theory that active construction of knowledge is driven by social interaction. This fit naturally with this course where students work together to explore new technologies. The course was offered to 17 USF mass communication students in the summer of 2022. This interdisciplinary education abroad experience served to broaden students' understanding of emerging media. The course took place in Budapest, Hungary, Vienna, Austria, Bruno, and Prague, Czech Republic. I arranged site visits with a variety of cutting edge digital media production and advertising companies to expose students to ways they can leverage emerging technologies in their future careers. On the first day, I explained the difference between AR, VR, MR, and XR. Then I delved deeper into the different experiences a user may have depending on the type of device being used. I first showed students a non-immersive VR experience by playing 360-degree YouTube videos on the classroom projector. To show students different ways they could access VR experiences, I passed around three tools with different levels of immersion and engagement. The lowest level of immersion included hands-on foldable mini clip-on VR glasses that attached to a cell phone. We used the YouTube app and explored a variety of 360-degree YouTube videos recorded with 360-degree cameras. I also passed around a Samsung Gear 360 camera that was released in 2017 to show students a user-friendly way to create these 360-degree videos in a device that automatically stitches the two fisheye camera angles together into equirectangular content. Students then used a 2018 Desktop V4 mobile VR headset. Students placed their cell phones into the front of the headset and viewed a variety of 360 degree content via the YouTube app. Students then used a fully immersive VR headset with hand controllers. They took turns using a wireless 2020 MetaQuest 2. Students tried the Oculus Trip meditation experience, Google Earth, and roller coaster games. Site visits included VR Tours Budapest, a virtual reality time traveling experience where students wore Oculus Go and were immersed in 360-degree 3D digital recreations of historical events. Tour guides walked our class through Budapest and stopped at seven predetermined locations. At each stop, we were directed to put the HMD on and plug in the earbuds. The VR Tours company created 360-degree 3D animations to tell the story of the event that occurred in the same spot where we were standing. The seven experiences lasted approximately five minutes, which meant the students spent about 35 minutes wearing the fully immersive VR headsets with walking breaks in between each experience. After being immersed in history, the class ventured into the future at a 360-degree audio-visual 3D video mapping restaurant named Uncensored. We sat in groups of three or four at six black tables in the small restaurant. To elevate a multi-sensory experience and remove distractions, the restaurant had thick soundproof walls and no windows. 
projectors attached to the ceiling, displayed videos on the four walls that took us on a culinary journey around the world in a cave automatic virtual environment. The purpose of exposing students to a cave environment was to see how their attitudes toward this type of VR was different from other VR experiences due to cave's collaborative environment. The experience included seven courses of food that represented seven different countries, including Hungary, Russia, China, Brazil, Spain, Japan, and America. The surround sound included audio that helped tell a story about cultures for each course. Each course lasted about 20 minutes for a total of two hours and 30 minutes of constant audio-visual immersion. The third site visit was held in the classroom at Masaryk University in Bruno, Czech Republic, because the Three Dragons office would be too small for the entire class. One of the Three Dragons in charge of the development company held a presentation for the class. The computer scientist researches VR and education and cultural heritage. He spoke about using Unity and Unreal Engines to create a variety of tools from AR, VR, MR, and XR. In Vienna, students took turns wearing MR glasses to interact with the real world and the virtual world at the same time while seated. NXRT develops simulations. They spoke to students about the need for high frame rates to create more realistic simulations to train everyone from a new driver to an airplane pilot. Later, the class visited the VR play park in Prague. The virtual reality theme park allowed students to experiment with a variety of headsets, virtual reality content, hand tracking, and haptics. Some of the experiences were single player VR games, but most of them were multiplayer where students communicated with one another in real time as avatars in a 360 degree virtual world. During a VR laser game called Field Tower Tag, students wore B haptic tack suits that vibrated any time a classmate would shoot them with a 3D printed blaster that was mapped to a virtual in-game model. This experience allowed students to walk around their own small area while wearing the Oculus HMD and headphones with a microphone so they could talk to their teammates. This experience was available for eight students at a time. Each experience lasted about 30 minutes. Another experience students participated in was the VR escape game Cosmos by Avatarico. Cosmos is a location-based entertainment VR escape game where players must work together to solve puzzles in a spaceship in zero gravity. The goal of this game was to teach teamwork communication and collaboration. Students were seated in groups while wearing HMD with hand tracking, headphones, and microphones. Students can control their avatars and make them fly through outer space. They could control the speed at which their avatar flew by stretching their hands farther in front of their faces. Hand tracking technology in HMD increased the speed as the student's hands stretched farther away. Hand tracking also enabled the students to pick up and manipulate 3D digital objects. They could fly in any direction by turning their heads. This experience was available to two to six students at a time. To win the game, students needed to assemble a variety of 3D digital objects together in VR. The experience lasted up to 60 minutes, but some students completed the game in a shorter period of time. The Oculus Rift S headsets were purchased in 2019. All headsets were wired. Because of this, latency was between five to 25 milliseconds. Their 3070 graphic cards enabled them to maintain frame rates above 100 frames per second. While in Prague, the class visited Google. Google employees invited us to join them in a conference room as they shared a presentation about the company's mission to innovate. We discussed the burden of being ahead of their time as experienced by Google Glass creators. Employees shared their opinions on why the original AR glasses struggled to become mainstream. They spoke about Google Cardboard, which to many people around the world was their first introduction to mobile VR. We also discussed YouTube's 360 degree video player that enabled millions of users to share and watch VR content. We spoke about Google Earth, which has been featured in several research studies about VR in higher education due to its ease of use and access. They offered insights into their suite of apps and how artificial intelligence may play a larger role. The class visited the Hume Lab at Masaryk University in Bruno, Czech Republic, to explore cutting edge technology being used to research emerging experiences like VR. Students submitted a prior knowledge survey by the first day of class where they rated their familiarity with emerging technologies on a scale. For the duration of the trip, 
Students submitted daily reflections about what they learned related to advertising, digital media, and emerging technologies like augmented reality, mixed reality, extended reality, and virtual reality. On the last day of the course, students submitted a final reflection. They were asked to explain their perceptions of advantages and disadvantages of different experiences. The prior knowledge survey found that while 71% of students had worn an HMD before enrolling in the course, the mean rating of familiarity with VR was only a four out of 10. Of the students who had prior experience with VR HMD, most had only used it once or twice before. 94% of students had experience with AR prior to enrolling. However, the mean familiarity rating was 3.6 out of 10. Most prior experience with AR was related to social media filters. At the end of the course, when asked to rate how much they would want educators to use virtual reality on a scale from one to 10, the mean rating was 8.18. .8. The following reflections lend themselves to better understanding how students perceive the advantages of different emerging technologies in this digital media course. According to TAM, perceptions of advantages and disadvantages impacts technology adoption because it influences perceived ease of use and perceived usefulness. If students have better perceptions of emerging technology, TAM says that it may make students more open to embrace new technology for learning. One student wrote, I think this new technology will be incredibly effective in the future. I believe it will bring an entirely different perspective to a new generation in learning and life in general. I find it amazing that we're on the cutting edge of this technology, knowing it will probably be highly developed in the future. Following our VR walking tour in Budapest, students expressed optimism that VR can be used as an educational tool. The overwhelming sentiment was excitement. One student wrote, it was really cool to stand in the exact locations where the depicted VR events took place, like battles and celebrations. I usually do not enjoy learning about history, but using VR helped hold my attention, and I can definitely say that I learned much more with the headsets than I would have otherwise. Following our visit to the Uncensored restaurant in Budapest, students reflected on what for many was their first cave experience. The main sentiment was an appreciation for the ability to interact with one another face-to-face -face while experiencing the projection-based VR. After the Three Dragons presentations, student reflections were overwhelmingly positive. Students brainstormed ways that they could envision this technology being applied in other ways. Some students wrote about how it could be used to teach people about climate change. Other students were intrigued by the technology's ability to foster empathy. Following the Hume lab visit, students reflected on additional tools that can be integrated into immersive experiences like eye tracking and motion capture suits. This experience focused more on research than other experiences. Most students were surprised to learn about ways that they could leverage technology to observe study participants during immersive experiences. In their daily reflections, students expressed several reasons they feel like emerging technologies would be beneficial in education. The most common theme was that students felt interactive and immersive learning experiences were more fun than traditional teaching methods like textbooks and lectures. One student wrote, I think using emerging technologies in education can make education more fun, interactive, memorable, and effective. Education doesn't have to be boring, and a lot of times students learn more and faster when the teaching is paired with something engaging. The following reflections lend themselves to better understanding how students perceived the disadvantages of different emerging technologies in this digital media course. Cyber sickness was the most common issue that students expressed concerning VR HMD used in this course. They wrote that not feeling cyber sickness would have improved their experience. Several noted that the bulkiness or weight caused the headsets to slide on their faces, especially when the headsets caused their faces to sweat. Some wrote that the sliding HMD would make the VR images blurry at times, and perhaps this led to additional feelings of cyber sickness. Others wrote about additional discomfort for people who wear glasses. Educators considering integrating this technology into their courses should warn students about the potential side effects and should consider making VR experiences optional for students for this reason. It would greatly help if other people researching VR included intervention durations in their papers. 
This could help the research community better understand best practices for implementing current VR technology and assist educators in planning virtual reality learning environments for a duration that is most likely to increase learning while least likely to cause negative side effects. Students had overwhelmingly positive attitudes toward using these tools. They expressed several advantages to using VR, including immersion and engagement, which they felt made learning more fun and memorable. But students also identified several disadvantages, mostly surrounding cyber sickness in fully immersive VR HMD. While students express an interest in using VR for education, most wrote that VR should only be used in shorter durations. They agreed that VR should not completely replace all other forms of education and stress that VR should be one of many tools that educators use to improve students' attitudes toward learning.